Get this 11 to 1 weekdays on the Triple M Network. With myself, Tony Martin. I don't like him. Oh, all right. There's always Ed Cavalli. He was hit by a bus tomorrow. Yeah. I'd go to his funeral oh. just to make sure he was buried. Oh, really? I don't like him. Okay, point made. Fine. And Richard Marsland giving Pauline a dirty Sanchez. <laughs> Please explain. Oh, we don't have time. He it's funny. <laughs> There's a website. Good on you, Pauline. <laughs> See you later. Are people accusing us of having fake callers, Ed Cavalier, on this show? Yeah, listen to this. Someone called Lazen Baby, real name, it says, just listening to the podcast, it strikes me as odd that when you have Talkback Mountain, some callers sound a lot like Richard, really? uh, named Marslin. And strangely, Richard, named Marslin, goes silent for these callers. Well, the reason that I'm going silent is yeah. because I've got so much. I'm, I'm monitoring the technical output of the show. Yeah, you are. Because <laughs> I've got callers. You know, who could say, who knows what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got to keep an eye on them. I've got applauses happening. And you genuinely hate the general public. So <laughs> yeah, there you... is that. Contempt for the audience. Obviously, that's a factor. <laughs> I've got microphone levels. I don't want to be bending needles. <laughs> well, you see, if he was doing the fake calls, he would have to go outside. Or ah, him, yeah, yeah, yeah. And who would be, um, you know, stuffing up the levels and pushing the wrong button? <laughs> Moi. Uh, but also, the thing to remember is that if someone from a show... Uh, goes out and becomes a fake caller, yeah. instantly, somehow, on the phone, they get an Indian accent <laughs> or a really full-on Chinese accent. That's how you know it's us. I think we've only had one fake caller. That was you. That was me. And I'm guessing you're never going to do that again because uh, as soon as you left the room, <laughs> I know. Ben Lawson went to town on your sex life. <laughs> That's what can happen. People are too frightened to leave the studio so to go and be a fake caller so on this true. show. Never no. get off the boat. No. <laughs> It's the apocalypse now. Keep in mind, uh, Ben Lawson's got a long history of questionable sexual adventures. Yeah, sure. That's all I'm saying. They'll all be detailed on the website, <laughs> yep. I'm told. Hey, let's move on to a professional radio program. Oh, okay, switch and over. that would be uh-huh. our sister station, PLPS yes. FM in Victoria, Patterson Lakes, Victoria. It's the uh, Patterson Lakes Primary School radio station. It has a broadcast radius of 10 blocks. Triple M will slowly take those yeah, 10 blocks. One block at a time. <laughs> All right, kids. Yeah. That's what they get. They're going to get some regime change if they're not careful down there. <laughs> but in the meantime, they're getting the exclusives that we can't get. Mm. They had John Howard, the real Prime Minister, not just somebody going, <laughs> or someone manipulating some tapes from Late Line. Oh, well, yeah. The real <laughs> Prime Minister sat in the hot seat. Now, we've been down to Patterson Lakes mm. Primary School for that hot seat. Yeah. Tell you what. Man alive, the cranked choices. Up, cranked up to 11. The choices they give you. Here's... Tell you, one thing I can tell you about the kids at PLPS, mm. not very good at handball. Oh, really? I destroyed those oh, kids. Did you become king very quickly? I was king almost <laughs> straight away, and I stayed king the entire lunchtime. You hear that, Stewie? That's right. King for lunchtime. What a hero. I don't know if uh, John Howard did a bit of handball when he was there. He's got nothing. But he certainly sat in the hot seat. Have a listen. Hi, Mr Howard. Now Chris and I are going to put you into the hot seat and give you some challenging questions. Yes. Typewriter or computer? Computer. Coco Pops or Fruit Loops? Fruit Loops. TV or radio? Radio. Spaghetti marinara or spaghetti bolognese? Marinara. Mariana. Fishing or eating fish? Eating fish. Football or rugby? Rugby. Newspaper or magazine? Newspaper. Lollies or vegetables? Vegetables. (laughs) Bob Dylan or Elvis? Oh, Bob Dylan by far. Shorts or pants? Shorts. (laughs) Holidays or work? Oh, both. (laughs) Actually work. (laughs) Primary or high school? Primary. Simpsons or Flintstones? Flintstones. <laughs> maths or homework? I mean, maths or English? Oh, English. Reebok or Nike? Sorry? Reebok or Nike? Reebok. And now, Mr Howard, for the hardest question of them all. Are you ready? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Desalination or recycled water? Oh, recycled water, definitely. <laughs> well Desalination done. is bad for the environment. Yeah. It was not as good for the environment. No. Burns too much electricity. Okay. And uh, inter- interferes with the marine life. Yep, yep. And I think we should go sure. into recycling in a big way. And Kids I think it's off. part of the future. <laughs> All right. Well done, Mr Howard. You have successfully completed the hot seat <laughs> challenge and answering each question very well. <laughs> Fantastic. Those kids do a sensational job.
Finally it's, answering the big questions. Yeah. I've been wondering about that marinara bolognese question for years. <laughs> and I email him every day. Never gets back to me. Well, anyway, we'll leave John Howard in his... Shorts. <laughs> You're listening to Get This, hosted by a couple of... Fruit Loops. Or as John Howard calls us, those two... Vegetables. But just between us, I think he'd been smoking some of that... Marinara. <laughs> Mariana. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> you know, who is the least likely recording artist you can imagine John Howard sitting down in the lodge to listen to on his gramophone? Oh, Bob Dylan by far. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, can you picture that? Yeah. Leave me alone. I'm, I'm putting on some Bob Dylan. <laughs> Hi, Jason. How are you? I don't know how this got past your radar. Yeah. On the latest Empire magazine, I had an interview with Jean-Claude Van Damme. Mm-hmm. Yes. And he said, uh, if he had any regrets in his life, he said, well, Street Fighter was corny to me. But um, there were some nice things. I met the land of Australia yeah. and had a mini affair with Kylie Minogue. Oh, <laughs> absolute bollocks. Do you not believe that the muscles from Brussels was ever on with Kylie, Jason? Is that what you're suggesting? I think He's got better taste, I suppose. Oh, is that right? Kylie's got better taste. He was playing Guile from the game Street Fight. <laughs> quite a uh, oh. quite a coup. Uh, yeah, you know, I love the way how my circle of John Claude Van Damme has decided to sort of turn his nose up at Street Fighter out of all of his titles. Yeah. <laughs> That's the weak link. Time Cop. I'll stand by that. <laughs> the Quest. That was, nothing wrong with that. The Legionnaire. Time's going to tell on that. <laughs> hey, Ken, how are you? Oh, mate, you know, all this health conscious stuff going on. I, I decided I might start drinking the bloody decaffeinated coffee. Yeah, how's it going? Well, it's going all right. I, I don't really like the taste of it, but bloody, to, to get everything in sync, I've, I've gone to every bloody furniture shop in Brisbane to find a decaffeinated coffee table you can't buy. <laughs> Absolute bollocks. I, yeah, you can't wonderful. buy. <laughs> yes, that's great. <laughs> thank you, sir, and thank you for holding on to say that to us. Good on you, buddy. Well done, sir. Cheers. Oh. We're going to have to wind things oh, up there. Late. Sorry, guys, I just got back from the sound lock. How are the calls? <laughs> How many voices can you do, Richard? Did you like the decaffeinated coffee table thing? Because that joke, was a mate. couple of days. Good Thanks, you are a genius. Hey, here's some news. Listen to this. Spix and Specs quizmaster mm. Adam Hills will be a presenter, but not, as everyone thought, the host of the Logies. Apparently, he simply doesn't suck enough. <laughs> <laughs> He's not able to read stiltedly from cue cards while fumbling for a pun about someone he's never heard of. Sorry, Adam, must try less, I guess. Okay, I've got a mystery for you. This is a question which has baffled all of us since really the beginning of this program. Mm. Can anyone here name a single song by Keith Urban? Oh, thank you. A single song by Keith Urban. Just take a few moments. Thank you. Uh, um... Um... I'm sure we'll get one by the end of the show. I'm sure we'll think of one. (laughs) Tony Moclair is with us. He's worked at Triple M a fair bit over the years. Oh, yeah. Have you got any uh, sort of Triple M lore that you can pass on to Ed Cavalli? Well, you should know a bit about the station at which you work, Ed. This story, I just want to say, it relates not actually to Triple M, but a a radio station that was very similar. Now, of course... (laughs) Let, don't, was don't, that an allegedly? Yeah. Is, that, <laughs> is this like when you say a friend of mine yeah. had um, to go to the emergency room because he slipped in the shower <laughs> while he was bottle. doing some vacuuming? Now, <laughs> there were two employees who may have been working at this particular radio station mm, one night. Who, station X. Yeah, <laughs> eventually went on to, to do quite well. But um, there was also a person who worked at the radio station who was well known for supplying pick-me-ups. Oh, right. Okay, right. especially on a Friday night. Don't look at me like that. Sandwiches. You know, yeah, <laughs> just, you know, little uh, helpers, I guess. Mm. I'm now, with you. Now, these, these two guys were, were very keen to kind of enjoy themselves on a Friday night. So they went to this particular person who was working, um, you know, down one end of the building. Mm. And they put him under some pressure. They said, look, we're about to go out. You're the go-to man. We need something and we need it quick. Right. Now, in this particular instance, he didn't have anything. Oh, yeah. He was caught short. Okay. <laughs> but he knew that if he didn't produce the goods, he could possibly lose his job. Oh, really? So, like anybody at a radio station, I'll say, he thought in his feet. So he said, go to your office. I'll be there in a couple of minutes. He went back and produced two garlic tablets. <laughs> oh, really? A bit said, of uh... Yeah. And said take these but before leaving he said listen 
they may take a while to actually, you know, um, get into your system. Try the suppository route. Shelve oh. them? Yes. <laughs> so, so, so whops them, you called up the back door. <laughs> yeah. So he, he always maintains the last oh thing he saw, God. because he left the building very quickly after yeah, doing yeah, that, yeah, yeah. was one of them helping the other guy put the pill in. <laughs> okay. Now, the, the helper had taken the pill first, and as the supplier left the building, he heard the words, Man, I just felt a kick in. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting a hot garlicky sensation round the back. Man, this is going to be a fun night. <laughs> Vampires won't be a problem, though. So, so I just want to knock the stereotype of people in radio stations being, you know, kind of uh, living that hard and fast lifestyle party boys. Okay. Wow. You thought garlic breath was bad before. <laughs> <laughs> the other end. There's just so many bits of that which it could have gone wrong. Because so, <laughs> garlic tablets kind of smell like garlic, you know. Yeah. And they're not small either. No, they're not. They're, not. they're kind not... of horse pill yeah, size. They're quite yeah. large. Yeah. And so, and so, but rather than just try and get away with it, he's going, yeah. I'll see if I can push this. Yes. If I can get them to shelve them, it'll yeah. give me a little, an extra couple of minutes to get out of the building. <laughs> he hot-footed it. That is quite amazing. <laughs> An yeah. evening of standing fun. <laughs> I, have to say, I haven't seen much of that no. here. All I see is a desperate Ed Cavalier chasing the sandwich guy out the corridor. <laughs> going, have you got any wraps? <laughs> Fred Niles got the answer to uh, the water shortage, yeah. which we were just talking about here. Mm. The well-known Christian Democratic uh, senator, 25 years of service, it says here in his ad in the, mm. in the newspaper. It's got a five-stage plan here to fix the water shortage. Yeah, hang on, it's the headline, Source of the Nile? No. Uh, no, oh, it should be. Missed the opportunity. It's damn the water shortage. Uh, it says, here we go, point one, build a new dam. Two, have industry recycle water by 2010. Point three, get rid of the gay Mardi Gras. <laughs> Really sure there. <laughs> Tell you what, uh, if we're going down uh, religious, <laughs> so nice. Rich is nodding at me, going, "That was good, thanks, bro." <laughs> I love it. No, no, so nice. nice. It's a caring, it's cheering atmosphere. You know, Virgin Mary sightings are on the increase oh, yeah, again yeah, yeah. Uh, in Texas when the image of the Virgin Mary appeared on one of their pizza pans on Ash Wednesday. I remember the this. dinner ladies at a particular school thought it was a message from God. Mm. Within hours, the apparition had become the talk of Houston, and the pan. A focus for pilgrims. Mm. This is not the first time the Virgin Mary's face has appeared in unlikely places. A grilled cheese sandwich, remember that one? Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, bearing the outline of the Madonna, ended up fetching 28 grand on the internet for its uh, Florida owner in 2004. In 2005, hundreds of visitors left candles and flowers and rosaries in a Chicago underpass after salt residue created a stain resembling the Virgin mm -hmm. Mary. Uh, another stain was found in the car park of a Michigan shopping centre. Wow, she's doing shopping centre appearances. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it only has to be vaguely virgin-like and mm. bang, 28 grand. That's pretty good. I can't believe that uh, in a pizza hut or Domino's this aren't, is a good idea. aren't capitalising on this. This is a good idea. You know, baking them straight in. The Domino's Virgin Mary Supreme. <laughs> the cheese stuffed crust and the Blessed Virgin clearly visible in every slice. <laughs> Don't you think people would go for that? <laughs> You know, love instead it. of waiting for one to appear at random, yeah. start putting them in there. That's a great idea. Get a sort of cookie cutter, you know, thing. Yeah, that you yeah. Use. excellent idea. Your choice of pepperoni or pineapple apparition. <laughs> Order two and get a 1.25 litre holy water max. <laughs> it's a Jesus Christ range. Oh, with pizza. Mm, now that's convincing. <laughs> I'm filled with divine belief and hot cheese. <laughs> Pizza is all I can think about. It's an odd campaign from the almighty, I must say. <laughs> it's a very odd campaign. Hmm. It's grassroots. Staying in an underpass. Yeah. <laughs> That'll get him believing. <laughs> Why not just appear on the news and say, look at me, start believing you lot. You're buggering up the planet. No, 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 no. On a pizza. That's the art. Let's get her on a lie detector. If the Virgin Mary showed up. Pan. If the Virgin Mary showed up. Tracy Grimshaw would have her on the lie detector. <laughs> Quick smart. Her versus Mercedes Corby. Who's telling the truth? Mind you, there do seem to be more Chappelle Corby sightings these days <laughs> than Virgin Mary sightings. Notice that. You must remember this woman, the uh, Stone Age beauty. Ooh. <laughs> 
not hot enough. Has uh, Oldfield been on with her? <laughs> thousands and thousands of years old, but simply not hot enough. Is yeah. that what you're saying? Yeah. She's uh, been floating around for a while now. I'm sure everyone's seen her. The Stone Age woman dubbed Thea, who was reconstructed by sculptors and anthropologists using computer technology. If you haven't seen the picture, it basically looks like that bloke Jaws from the James Bond films with the metal <laughs> teeth with a wig on. Uh, the skeleton was found uh, in the Arctic region. And, uh, oh, you can see the results of the anthropologist's work in the new zoo magazine where she's Stone Age stacked. <laughs> Check out the Arctic shell. <laughs> There you go. I love it when they find somebody who's been buried in the ice for thousands and thousands of years. Why? There was a great letter. In fact, Anthony Morgan, comedian Anthony Morgan, yes. used to carry this yellowing letter to the Australian around in his wallet because he said it was the funniest letter he'd ever seen to uh, the press. And it was from you know someone with a surname like Angry ah, yes. or Disgruntled. Yeah, yeah. And they'd found the bloke buried in the glacier and he had a rock in his hand. Oh. And they worked out that he'd used the rock to file down his fingernails and cut his own hair. What? So someone wrote into the Australian saying, look, if a man from thousands and thousands of years ago, a primitive, can take a bit of trouble with his appearance, why can't the louts down at my local <laughs> shopping centre get a haircut? <laughs> <laughs> What's the latest on... Shake, shake, shake. Shake, shake, shake. Halali. Anything? Wasn't it Mufti Day on the weekend? <laughs> Weren't they having a big vote? It could have been. I, I think maybe, and I, I want to tread carefully here. I don't yeah. want to get any information wrong. Of course right. not. Uh, but I think he's Mufti for another uh, three months. Oh, okay. Possibly. Really? I could be wrong. He's got an extension. Hmm. I mean, you know, a lot of people want to see Sheikh Ali go, but, you know, he's a colourful character. He's, he's a, a card. He is. Him and the catch-up are pushing the cause of feminism <laughs> forward each day. <laughs> What about a TV movie about Shake Alala? Oh, that's yeah, good. Who's going to play the show? I don't know. What would you call Who's it? Who's going to play it? Well, you know, is that movie The Wind That Shakes the Barley? Yeah. <laughs> what about The Wind <laughs> of Shake Alali? That works beautifully. <laughs> That'll work all right. Oh, and I see the Hitler moustache is making a comeback. Oh, really? Oh. On the face of Robert Mugabe. <laughs> now, not, have a close look. Picture right. of him in the Australian today. He's growing a Hitler moustache. <laughs> right. That's not a good look when they're calling you an evil dictator in the international press. I'm not an evil dictator. <laughs> what? Give me a mirror. Oh, how did that get? There. It's a Chaplin moustache. There's only been four ever. Who? Charlie Chaplin. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oliver Hardy. Yes. Yeah. People forget Oliver Hardy went yes, the. Uh, I know they do. Hitler. Blakey from On the Buses. Yeah. Maybe he's an On the Buses fan. <laughs> This tyranny was due out <laughs> 10 minutes ago. He needs one of these moustaches from the Mo Festival in Germany. Oh, Ooh. so maybe that's what Mugabe's working on. I think uh, live from the town of Schenkenberg. Is that right? Oh. Schoenberg? Maybe He's... it's just Movember in Zimbabwe. <laughs> Movember comes early. <laughs> oh, Ed's just drawn. His eye has gone to the crazy moustaches. Yeah. This is brilliant. <laughs> they are pretty good. It's the Germans. None of those men have girlfriends. Let's just get that out on the table they've now. They've got fancy hats. <laughs> yeah. I sure Barry, have. who wants a girlfriend when you've got a barber's like a stripy jacket and a bowler hat? My wow. guess is many of them drive vintage cars. <laughs> what did you do? Surely you went outside. Not really, Surely boys. someone no, in this room was outside on the no, weekend. I went to Coles. <laughs> Wow, what is happening there? It's just a, oh. Did they have one of those spillages and they had to put up the rubber sign? No, they didn't. Know the oh, little, that makes a, life exciting. It does. And you try and wait for someone to fall before the sign goes up. Uh, I went to Coles and I have to get out of there really quickly because mm. on the weekends it's just endless, endless mid to late 20s couples mm. having long, awful discussions about which brand of whatever boring product it is they should buy. <laughs> And I had to get out of there because I was like, if I'm ever standing there, yeah. you know, with a girlfriend saying, well, Omo does smell like eucalyptus, mm -hmm. but I find that cuddly, you know, really brings out, jeez, man. Were they filming a commercial? No, it's just, this is what people do. This is what you guys were missing out on. Mm -hmm. People standing in front of the cereal aisles complaining mm -hmm. that Sustain used to have more nuts in it. Yeah. I love it grocery death. shopping. It's I had a celebration on the weekend, actually, grocery shopping. For the first time ever, I got my card through the right way the first time when I was doing f Congratulations. Every time I do it... You yeah. got oh. Oh. I, that's about, you know, every time I do it, I have to give it about 30 goes. It's yeah. about 17 combinations. There's you can... no time for discussions at the Sorry. supermarket. You just, my wife goes oh. and buys all the boring things. I go to the chocolate biscuits aisle. Yes. And then we meet at the queue and start reading the New Weekly for free. <laughs> that's basically what it's all about. And yeah. do you ever do that thing where you wander... 
you know, with your significant other, wander slightly aimlessly through mm. the pasta sauces saying things like, well, the olives I like, but we did enjoy the basil one last time, didn't we? <laughs> didn't we? We did enjoy the basil one last time. Oh, yeah. dear. Grey's Anatomy's on in four hours. We better get home. <laughs> No, no, we don't have that discussion. Oh. It's basically standing in the aisle, uh, gasping in horror at the Hollywood plastic surgery disasters. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you're leading to at the supermarket. That's what I'm looking for. Reading the mags for free. That's what I'm looking for. That's what it's about. We've got Lawrence Leung with us here on the panel. Your new show, Lawrence Leung Learns to Break Dance, uh, to be seen at the Melbourne International Comedy Festival and then possibly on tour, uh, is an examination of coolness, is it not? That's correct. Uh, yeah, because I'm trying to outcool my brother and I've worked out four factors that make him cooler than me. He uh he's he's a musician of course. So yeah, that's why already he's he's beating right. me there. Uh he looks cooler than me, so his fashion is cooler. All oh, right. So I'll be talking about fashion. And uh he's more of a ladies man. Yeah. Right? yeah. So you know I bought that book The Game. Oh, oh, yeah. oh yeah. I've yeah. read that. Neil yeah. Strauss. I'm sure you have read that. Yeah. yeah is yeah. it working for you? Oh, you betcha. Uh yeah I, I read Actually it. Ed you said an interesting thing to me. Oh, no. Last year on the show. Off air? Ed got the book and he goes, hey, I'm going to read this and then we can talk about it on air. Oh, yeah. And then I said, well, you've read the book. Can we talk about it on air? And he goes, oh, let's not talk about it yet. <laughs> I'm going, what does that mean? I think that means Ed's using the pickup technique. It no, means he, he doesn't wants to blow try it, on it air. out first. Because he wants to try it no, out first. It doesn't mean he wants to try it out first. You've got millions of guys now walking up to women, never met them before. Doing magic doing tricks. Magic tricks. <laughs> magic tricks. I, have you seen it happen yet? Yeah, I, I have. In bars, it's just it, oh, little foam balls annoying. as far as the eye could see. Have you seen this pre-coital conjuring going on <laughs> in nightclubs, Lawrence? <laughs> is it working? Well, the thing is, I'm really upset because, you know, I was a 14-year-old with a magic set. I can, you know, do a car trick in my time, but now I can't because people think that I'm going to try to pick them up. Exactly. <laughs> It's but you really, fair. you just want to show them the trick. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pick a card. What? Don't leave. No. <laughs> Ace of spades. It's so bad. Magic tricks are the secret to coolness now. Mm. Right, <laughs> Who would have thought? <laughs> Mr. Marsden, what attempts have you been making to be cooler? I mean, when you were a kid, were you considered cool? I mean, I know you had the dreadlocks at one point, didn't you? Uh, the... No, I didn't have dreadlocks. I had long hair. That's, oh, a, that's yeah. about as far as it went. Like, I mean, it went down to almost my hips, and it was massive. Who was it inspired by? Um, I don't know. Who I think are you I trying got, to look like? What's annoying is that my sister got married while I had long hair. And oh. I should have just got a cut because now there's about seven photos <laughs> doing the rounds of me <laughs> in a ponytail. I hope our website includes the rounds. Mm. No, you're not seeing me in a ponytail. Hello, ladies. It's the most hideous look. It's the only time I ever put my did hair in a ponytail. Did you have a scrunchie? Ponytail. Yeah, it was ridiculous. Did you have a scrunchie? It's painful. It's a painful memory. How did you keep it up? I should have just got a cut. Um, how did I keep my... Like, well, how did you keep no, the ponytail a, up? Just a rubber band. And, yeah. then, and then at the reception, I thought it was time to rock out, and I let the hair dangle free. Oh. <laughs> so a rubber band is you dressing up for a wedding. Yeah. <laughs> Let's talk about uh, caught on film. Have you ever been caught on film in any context, uh, Lawrence? I wouldn't say caught on film. I, I made a video when I was about 10, and uh, this was the day before Jackass and YouTube. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, my uh, best friend uh, <laughs> locked me in a suitcase. yeah. And he filmed me th being thrown down the stairs. Fantastic. Good yeah. footage. That set off the cameras. And, you know, when you watched it back, was it all worth it? <laughs> yes. It's, I, if I could wow. find it, I will put it up on YouTube. It's no, 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 no. Make yourself some real money. Funniest home videos. Yeah. yeah. Boing. Damn. Yeah. Yeah. Going away present, Mark. Or something, you know, it'll <laughs> yeah, be along yeah. those lines. I love how you say, in the pre Jackass and YouTube era. That's like the silent cinema era. Remember, days, isn't it? remember those days? It. Most of my caught on films are now sadly on YouTube. I think even the footage where I played Vanetta Fields <laughs> in a mock John Farnham video. Inexcusable. All I can say is it was an earlier time. It was an earlier time in Australia's history, the 1980s. You've Forever. been caught on film, Ed Cavalier. Not me, uh, unfortunately, but how about this guy? A Connecticut man has landed in hot water after police say he hid a tiny camera in a shampoo bottle to watch two of his female roommates as they took showers. <laughs> All right. Wow. Touche. I've heard of um, two-in-one conditioner and shampoo, but not with camera. Three-in-one. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So you look at this. A male roommate wondering why the shampoo wasn't moved for some time and why the sound guy was so rough with the loofah uh, found, <laughs> found wires protruding from the back of the bottle and he tried to remove it. He called the police. The young man in his defence said it was a breakthrough for down showering everywhere and they should let him go. <laughs> but what about you, Ed Cavalier? Caught on film. Come on. 
Oh, no, not the really. The mouse can't. costume, the giant. Oh, the mouse costume. Yeah, the giant mouse costume, Lawrence, that I submitted to home video last year. Yeah. Mm. Probably the best video they've ever seen. They refused to play it. It was oh. too hot to handle. You too know, hot to handle. It was too hot. I know. They're not ready for the revolution it's going to incite, so they didn't play it. It'll have to be on Funniest After Dark. I had to, oh, yeah. Well, we're <laughs> trying to get Naughtiest Home Videos back on. Yeah, we have been trying Doug for a year. Doug Yeah, Morris. try oh. dust it off. It would look tame now. Yeah, and Packer can't pull it off. Yeah, he exactly. pull it off air because he's not around anymore. There you go. No, someone else would have to call up and say, get that effing S off the screen now. Do you yep. think Richard Marson could top these stories? Yes. Caught on film, Mr. Marson? Well, uh, my very first uh, performance ever um, in a primary school production of Happy Talk from the uh, musical South Pacific. I still yeah. talk about it. <laughs> I played a role where I had to come on and kiss this girl. Oh, and, yeah. And then at the end sort of, you know, join in a bit of the dance and singing. Mm-hmm. Which you're uh, doing now, and impressively, I, <laughs> yes. And I think I was about six years old mm-hmm. and the ending had me on hand and knee sort of Al Jolson style. Oh. Oh, yeah. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Big finish. And the girl comes and, and sits on my lap. And it's sort of a romantic sort of ending, you know, kids, you know. Really? Very cute. But I, my, I'd miss my mark and I'd come forward a bit too far. So the curtain actually closed behind us. <laughs> and we're holding this position. <laughs> <laughs> like and crazy. Then the awkward shuffle off stage. Yeah. And then we had to try and find the, you know, the, the join in the curtains. <laughs> but we were standing there with our hands outstretched, like thinking, geez, the audience are going off. They're loving it. For about 20 seconds. So, yeah, it's an awkward oh, moment, but uh, caught on film, certainly. All right, Richard Marsden has been uh, caught doing an Al Jolson on stage. <laughs> Ed Cavalli is dressed up as a giant mouse. I've mm. done an offensive impression of Vanetta Fields. It can't be denied. And Lawrence Leung has thrown himself down a staircase in a suitcase. <laughs> <laughs> Have well. you been caught on film, listeners? Hi, Tim. How are you? A couple of years ago, uh, my mate held a party and um, his parents had a very expensive bottle of bourbon. It was like 100 years old. It was like an heirloom or something. Yeah. And my other mate uh, drunk it, totally denied it, <laughs> until the day after we had video footage of him with a big grin just sculling it away. <laughs> <laughs> what did he say then? Uh, well, in his defence, he said, well, if you play the tape backwards, it looks like I'm singing backwards. <laughs> and I can't remember having it anyway. There was karmic justice in it because... Um, just recently, there was a, a bus that went through a shop front at Marrickville. Yes. Yeah, that was his house and his workplace. So everything got destroyed, and my wife just went, yep, sweet, that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> Where even? That's not to believe. That's been wow. sorted out. I've heard of when a butterfly flaps its wings, there's a tsunami, but not when you drink 100-year-old whiskey, there's a truck coming through your house. Hi, Paul, how are you? I'm very well. How are you, Ed? Oh, great, mate. What happened? New Year's Eve, 2003. And uh, we set up a video camera um, <laughs> above the TV, which we had karaoke running through. Yes. And during the course of the night, all sorts of things happened, including um, my now wife mm-hmm. performing fellatio on me, which is great. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, Easy. Great way to ring in the new year. <laughs> play it every year, we do now. Everyone yeah. comes round. Oh, my God. What song was it, were you playing? What were you singing when that was going on? Um... Well, no, when that was going on, I wasn't singing anything. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't follow the bouncing ball when she's doing that. How am I supposed to take this seriously? I was singing, um, don't blame it on the moonlight. <laughs> now tell me, uh, when did you first replay the video? Was there uh, in like a censorship period? Or did you get everyone back around to have a look at the video uncensored? Is that how you no, discovered it? No, 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 no. Dave and I knew what was going to be on there, so we had a look at it all. And you then, and Dave. Uh, well, you know what? I'm glad Dave was involved. <laughs> because if he wasn't, I was going to be very upset. He wasn't performing for last year. Oh, it's not how Dave tells it. Uh, you know, I was thinking, we need a sort of program within our own program yeah. where we can fling some mud about yeah. and get some of that hot current affairs action. Absolute bollocks. Tonight on Absolute Bollocks, the Brisbane home that's been turned into a shrine for hundreds of pilgrims. So when did this oil just start appearing? Well, I first noticed it when I moved me motorbike. And as you can see under... Oh, will you pilgrims put a f***ing lid on it? Absolute bollocks. This man says he has a bad back and can't work. But look what happened when we pushed him down this flight of stairs. I guess he'll now be claiming workers' cob. Absolute bollocks. I ate nothing but cheese for a year and a half. Not even for a story on the show. Absolute bollocks. Darren Hinch has done something again. 
Absolute bollocks. And now on Abso Bowl, as we call it, which is itself, here you get the idea, it's over to me doing a slightly different voice. What would happen if there was no news to report? I guess you'd have to create some news of your own. That's why we got a whole lot of actors to pretend to be trying to drive home pissed and then stitched up unwitting members of the general public by secretly filming them doing nothing about it. Here comes our drunk. Let's hope the music doesn't give the game away. And look at that, that man's doing nothing. What a bastard! Here's how a man-captioned psychologist reacted to our obnoxious scenario. Hmm. Hmm. Well, as you can see, these people aren't stopping to help at all. Breakdown of morals in society? No, I mean, the acting's just so piss poor, why would you? But it doesn't end there. Look at this film of the same actors performing a new one-act play by Joanna Murray-Smith in the round in the middle of this busy city intersection. Mm. Mm, well, once again, complete indifference. And no one's stopping to appreciate the pithy comments about the middle classes. The startling minimalist staging arouses no interest whatsoever. Absolute bollocks. Oh. <laughs> Oh, We've blown the lid the, off that the theater issues, caper. <laughs> the issues have been canvassed. <laughs> well, I don't want people to think that that's a real current affairs show. No. On real current affairs show, they tackle real stories. Mind over matter, how thinking thin can apparently lose your weight. Oh. Bang! See, that's not an annoying sound, really, no, is it? That's brilliant. What are the world's most annoying sounds? They've done a poll. Mm. Of course they have. What would you think it would be? Hmm? Um, starts with C and ends in Elin Dion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, it's uh, it's a sound often associated with Celine Dion, though. Mm-hmm. It's the sound of somebody vomiting. Ah. This is the world's most annoying sound. <laughs> the sound as recreated by acoustics experts using uh, a bucket of diluted baked beans. One out over the number two most annoying sound, fingers being Drag down a blackboard. Oh, nobody will be listening now. It's pretty Horrible. good. It's Robert Shaw and Jaws. <laughs> Very good. Third most annoying sound. Oh, no one likes this one. Oh, turn that off, please. Stop it. I like that. No. <laughs> Not fun at all. It's a personal massager. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> For a mouse. Mm. What about this? Wailing babies. <laughs> there they are. Oh. Look at Nikki Hamilton. Yeah. Not even batting an eyelid. She hears that one all the time. Please stop it. Yeah, that started me leaking. Those. <laughs> Sorry, Nikki. Those are the four most annoying sounds in the world, according to humans. Mm-hmm. And uh, what happens if you put all those four sounds together? Hmm. I like your pants around your feet. That's what it creates somehow. Rich, come on. Okay. Wow. Wow. Bring back the blackboard. We're not into that anymore. <laughs> uh, but hey, annoying sounds may soon be a thing of the past, as indeed may all sounds. It's an experiment that's going on at uh, Napier University in Edinburgh. Hello to everyone listening. The principle of active noise cancellation. I, I don't quite even understand this. The idea is that every sound has waves of peaks and troughs that can be cancelled out by producing the inverse yep. simultaneously. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. So you've got one sound, and then you get the exact opposite of that sound. They cancel each other out. It'll peak and trough. Right. Mm. Okay, so if you got, like, I don't know, Motorhead, yep. and then played... I don't know, Bill and Sebastian, there would just be nothing. <laughs> nothing That's in right. them. Yeah. That's the idea. <laughs> create a void. The idea is to create silent pools in the workplace, mm. just as desk lamps create pools of light. So you could just have a switch that you flick, and then within this radius, there would be complete silence. I see. Mm. So if the think tank is getting too raucous, yeah. the idea shower is getting out of control yep. down the mm-hmm. hall, the energy captain's whipping up a storm in the cape running mm-hmm. up and down the corridors, mm-hmm. and you're innovating and inventing, yep, yep. you need some time out, and you just flick this little switch and stand in some silence. Great idea. What we're thinking. It's a chilling thought for radio announcers <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> silence could be coming. <laughs> silence. If we leave a long enough gap, will the eagles come in? That's what used to happen yes. at Triple M. They had the emergency tape. That's right. Well, I, I know that they update the emergency tape every time the mm. format changes mm. because sometimes the music might not be of the new format. Ah. And I'm not sure exactly what the time limit is. I think it might be 30 seconds, but I could be wrong. Mm. So if we sit here and do nothing for 30 seconds? It could possibly come mm. in. Mm.
What if I'm just rustling papers? No, that, that counts. Doing the Debnam. <laughs> it's my Peter Debnam. <laughs> Pretty good. Let's find those figures. <laughs> okay, uh, what does this lead us to? Secret sound. Secret sound. We've never played it. You know, we did do one, but nobody ever got it. <laughs> Four weeks, nobody was able to identify well, I'm that. I'm not sure what that is. You want to hear it again? Nope. No. <laughs> sure. You, oh, oh, no, the most popular answer is Hinder. Oh, Adelaide. So why don't we do secret sound in reverse? Let's get people to call up with their secret sounds. Oh, we got to guess what it is. Call us up, make a sound, and we'll see if we can work out what you're doing. Okay, this Easy is great. enough. This is the, turning it on its head. Yeah. This is part of someone emailed in and said uh, the innovation session should be called Imagine Pageants. I think that oh, what we've had here great. is an Imagine Pageant. An imagine Pageant. Because that is a new idea yeah. in radio. People call up with their own secret sounds. Mm. We sort it out. Great. Yeah, you got to like be it. careful with this. I remember years ago um, <laughs> when we were doing Martin Malloy, uh, the other station that was on opposite us started doing a segment called uh, Make Us Laugh, oh, yeah. where people just had to call up with jokes. We're thinking, well, hang on, isn't it? Doesn't it work the other way around? Shouldn't the people who are being paid <laughs> be making the audience laugh? Yeah, 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 yeah. So Mick and myself had a segment, and it only lasted three days before we were told to stop it, which was called Do Our Job. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a bit of that. Hi, Verity. Yeah, hi, hi Ed. How are you going? I, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm ready for the challenge, <laughs> yo. Uh, well, I'm going to have to hold my phone out and see if you can hear it. Hang Let's on. do it. Here we go. Okay. Uh, tap dancing. Now, you must have heard something there. I, I did, we did. Now, what, is it the sound of a credit card being run up and down the side of a parachute tracksuit? <laughs> no. No, no there, there, there is parachute sort of material involved. But no, no, not really. That wasn't the main sound. Is it an animal wearing a tracksuit eating something? <laughs> no. Well, you got the animal part right. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, the orchestra went too early, I think, Mr. Martha. <laughs> What is it we give up? All right, it's my horse going around me in a circle on the sand arena and there's a, an underlying sound you may not have heard that is his <laughs> testicles slapping on the inside of his thighs. Oh, of course. Wow. We not spot that wow. one. Especially... I think he got a bit of stage fright and they retracted, unfortunately. <laughs> you know, Ed's first job, Verity, was working with animal testicles and I'm not joking there. You uh, should have spotted that, Ed. Very, yes, very, he should have. Very, That's not in motion. I, I didn't want to say anything, but I did recognise the slapping <laughs> and I think he may have a problem. I think you should uh, maybe take him down the vet. All right. Uh, well, it's a little warm up here today. Okay. okay. Fair enough. Thank, Thank you, Verity. You, Verity. And, the correct uh, answer was old Mr. Ballsack. Who's going next? <laughs> Hi, Nick. How are you? Good, thanks, mate. Good. Now, if your sound is uh, testicle slapping against your thigh, we've already had it. <laughs> uh, so take it away whenever you're ready, son. Yep. No, it's... it's uh... Okay. Yep. It's uh, Is that from uh, Super Mario? No, it's <sighs> not. <laughs> Now, hang on. So your secret sound was just you going... Bloop. Yes. Well, so I've got it right. <laughs> it's Super Mario's from the 80s. It would be from the 80s, the stand-up comedian. Oh, is this a bit of Michael Winslow? No. Uh, Eddie Murphy. Yes. So at what point did Eddie Murphy go... Bloop. <laughs> You'd be doing it in a bath. Ah, right. Oh, OK, yeah, in yeah, the yeah. nutty professor. Yeah. Pardon me. No, wow. well, they thank you, Nick. And yeah, point... I should point out, <laughs> as a sound effects buff... Mm. Yeah. The Nutty Professor is a $75 million Hollywood film. Yeah. All of the fart sound effects are taken from a series of CDs called The Hollywood Edge. In fact, volume 13, Human Sounds. Yeah. $75 million. Wouldn't you make your own farts? No. Instead oh, of just getting oh, them off the same saying. CD they used on Hey Hey at Saturday for years? <laughs> it worked on Hey Hey. Very poor work. Very. Hi, Paul. How are you? Hi, how are you going? Take it away. All right. Have, I'll listen to this. <laughs> I've got it. Paul, are you ready? Paul? There you go. Yep. That's you lapping up a can of Jim Beam and Cola you poured into a saucer for yourself. <laughs> Was it a dog? Was it a yellow Labrador? No, it's a... German Shepherd. Oh, German Shepherd. And uh, what was he doing? Was he was lapping up some drink, wasn't he? Um, no, he was just licking his chops. In anticipation of what? What are you dangling in front of him? Uh, <laughs> not my testicles. That's oh, well, no, <laughs> you wouldn't want to do that. No. <laughs> that's a disturbing image. <laughs> it's an interesting way of training your dog. Okay, bring the paper in and, hey, these could be yours. <laughs> All right. Get this, it's blown out to two hours, 11 to 1 weekdays on the Triple M Network.